I'm a different type of survivor than Deborah Newell. Deborah did have to protect her children against Dirty John, but I had to protect my children against their own father. I was Dirty John's first wife. I was married to him for approximately 10 years, and I have two children with him. John and I met in a bar, 1988. He stopped me on the way to the restroom. I was a surgical nurse at the time, and he told me that he was working in a cath lab at a nearby hospital. John always had an answer for everything. I did most of the wedding planning. I had about 150 people, and John basically just had his groomsmen. He said his family would embarrass him. It's because he didn't want them to ruin his cover. I wanted children before John, and eventually he said it was time. I thought I had a normal marriage, and my marriage blew up over the course of a couple months. Two and a half years into our marriage, I received a phone call from a woman looking for John, and I said, this is his wife. And she said, oh my God, I was out with John last night, and I slept with John last night, and I think your husband's a con man. John had started a relationship with a woman in Michigan prior to us even conceiving Abigail. After John returned from a vacation that he took by himself, I unpacked his suitcase, and in his suitcase I found a syringe. I confronted John about that, and John said that he was injecting a cyst under his eye with lidocaine. I was in shock. I had not seen any signs of drug addiction in my husband. My life was hijacked against my will. John married me, and he knew who I was, but he didn't give me that same choice. I married someone I didn't know. Why did you wait so long to speak up and tell your story? Because I have been really curious about your story and everything because you spent 10 years with this man. Why'd you wait so long and why are you telling your story now? I think I waited so long because the focus was on the end of his life. I was so glad uh, that, that you're now telling this and that you're doing the podcast and your producer, Laura Richards, is here that produces great job, by the way. I'm so glad that you guys have done this. Uh, it's a it's a wonderful uh, wonderful story. It's a cautionary. You start out by saying it's a cautionary tale, and we'll talk about that more later. Now you were only 23 when you met him. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And would you say that he um, was charming? He definitely was charming. He would definitely you swept like you off your feet. Um, he definitely was somebody who I felt like was really into me, like he could see me, and I was somebody who was, I guess, looking to be seen, looking to sure. find someone to spend my life with. Right. And what was your first impression of him the night you met him? He was asking me a lot of questions. He seemed interested in me. He was very engaging and smiling. Would you say he was a good audience? Yes, that's a good Did way you? to say it. He, yeah. he wanted to hear more about me than talk about himself. Yeah. Yes, and for sure. A good con man will do that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. we know that now. Yes. So what did he tell you about himself that night? So that night, um, he said that he was working in medicine, so that's something we had in common. Right. Um, we had discussed our ages pretty soon in the conversation. I was 23. He said he was 24. Mm -hmm. He bought a drink, and of course, he had to show his license for that drink, and I just kind of playfully snatched his license. I don't even know why, really, but I did. And the uh, year that was on the license didn't um, coordinate with the year that he said. I said, yeah. well, I thought you would be born in 64, not... I think it said 59, which is his yeah. real age. And he said, oh, well, I got my license. I altered it because I wanted to get alcohol in college. And I thought, well, I know other people that have done that, so I couldn't think of any other reason that it would be. Give us the benefit of your wisdom now. Looking back, what are red flags that maybe are obvious to you now that were not obvious to you at the time? I think a couple things jump out at me. One, obviously, the age. Uh, two, that the very first night he was able to convince me to do things that I wasn't ready for, prepared for, or wanted to do, which was to drive him home. Right. Um, the fact that uh, he was isolating me from his family and knowing his family, um, because of course he said they were all uh, bad, and he, you know, he was had escaped them, and he was a better person and a healthier person being away from his family. 